Not sure if any of y'all noticed, but fighting games are one of, if not my favorite genre in this wacky medium known as the video game. Hell, I regularly do a podcast about it. And while I'm certainly not the best at button bashers and there's certain franchises I don't personally vibe with, I'm still nevertheless fascinated by all aspects of punching, kicking, grappling, and throwing fireballs. One specific aspect that has always captured my imagination is cancelled fighting games, and even more specifically, ones that got so far into development you can actually still play them. At one point in time, the fighter was indisputably the most popular genre of the world over and helped achieve record profits for select publishers and in some instances put them on the map. So it's weird to think that other companies couldn't get their crap together long enough to even take a bite out of the fighting game pie when they were so close to doing so. Therefore, with the stage now properly set, let's take a look at the fighting games that, for whatever reason, never were. Let's begin with a good old ripoff by the name of Vicious Circle. No, not that embarrassing Rooster Teeth disaster from a few years ago, but an Atari Games developed arcade fighter which was dangerously close to copyright infringing on Nintendo and Rare's Killer Instinct. This was the same Atari coin-op division that produced Gauntlet, Primal Rage, and San Francisco Rush, and once KI became one of 1994's biggest hits, a small team within that division set to work on emulating it. Vicious Circle would use an arcade board derived from the same dual chipset that resided in the Jaguar, although it had various technical improvements, not to mention a hard drive. Oh, just like KI! This was used for copious amounts of CGI animated clips and assets, which Vicious Circle would use rather copiously. There were needlessly elaborate intros to each and every bout. The backgrounds were primarily composed of looped videos, as well as all the finishing moves. These silly little things weren't done via the in-game sprites, but rather fully animated cinemas that the game would abruptly cut to. The team initially had concepts for 23 different characters, but this was whittled down to around a dozen or so once they were either yayed or nayed by what I'm sure was a focus group filled with the greasiest, pimpliest 15-year-old faces. The final roster wound up being a pastiche of 90s as hell archetypes, with more than a few of them having a passing resemblance to Jago, Glacius, Saberwolf, and Orchid. Not only that, the game's main distinguishing feature was an elaborate combo system that offered openers, auto-doubles, linkers, etc. And then of course there was the Berserker mode, which let players unleash a giant flurry of flashy hits to decimate their opponents. To be fair though, this required both manual inputs from the player as well as enough meter, unlike Ultras, so it functioned closer to Street Fighter Alpha 2's custom combos more than anything else. Why was it cancelled? Well, there's two likely reasons, and honestly, they're both probably true. When Midway bought Atari games, they put the kibosh on several titles that were in development, like Primal Rage 2, which I've covered before, and Vicious Circle was just another victim. The other big reason was that there was reportedly a dispute with the company that provided the Jaguar-esque arcade board the game ran on, which most likely would have taken additional time slash money to sort out, which Midway probably thought wasn't worth the effort. Thus, an unfinished version of Vicious Circle was eventually leaked online a few years back and can be played fairly easily through MAME, although it is lacking a few layers of polish. The combo system is rife with infinites and TODs, its button configuration is all messed up, and finally there's the super annoying flashing effect that occurs whenever you get a clean hit, uh, I think. So a bit of a flashing lights warning coming up. So yeah, while it's a shame the team's work never officially saw the light of day, I don't think we were denied some type of hidden gem here because the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, in my opinion, is a far cry from what Rare were able to achieve around the same time frame. Anyway, it's time to push some buttons and enter this vicious circle. So the, the, there's such a thing as being too 90s, like even for me, I know that sounds, you know, impossible, uh, but but this is Vicious Circle and it, it is indeed too 90s to exist, you know, and I think certain games, you know, really represent the decade when I think about the 80s and, and fighting and video games, I think of, you know, 
Uh, year are Kung Fu or even Street Fighter 1, perhaps. Uh, when I think of the 90s, I think of the big three. Uh, Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, KI. And then there's, there's the Vicious Circle. You can see all this bollocks happening on screen. Some type of rage virus shoots out of that volcano and it makes all these Pepsi mans just want to fight. Just just everyone wants to Hulk out. Everything becomes fight world. So we got R Rad, Rab, I don't know. Click clacked. That's a prequel Star Wars character. They're bollock. Just straight up Glacius. Don't even give him the benefit of saying his real name. Chainsaw, your regular post-apocalyptic punk. Stiletta, I don't even know. I guess it's like a K uh, orchid ripoff. There's Edge. Yep, that's Edge. There's Tiara. I don't even know what she's supposed to be. Uh, let's just take Jago. What's that whipping sound? That was weird too. This, that's, that's the boss, I believe. It's not even a vicious circle, it's a straight line. We fight every character in. So yeah, look at this. That's just a little pre-stage intro. Each stage kind of has one. Oh my god, I'm just trying to figure out the controls here. One of them is like your special move or like super activation, but not yet. Uh, uh. Uh, just give me a second to acclimatize. I don't, I don't even know. I think it's the background that really does it to me. When, when something moves that fast and that much, it's a 90s thing just going, look how cool it is. Look, look, look. Don't be bored. Catch your attention. Oh, that was kind of cool. And just like KI, round, round start instantly. There's Berserker. It's hard to describe how this plays. It's not well. I mean, it feels like there's fun to be had. Oh, a little, little, little baby shirk in there. It's very slow. I like that in my projectiles. I don't, like, I think that's me turning invisible. I'm not sure. Timeout. Okay, I won by timeout. That's, that's a win. That's Edge Matthew of default victories. No tea. Oh, great. This fucking Lo Wang Shadow Warrior guy. And what was that? That was the vampire dude. He's not even here. Okay, that's a teleport. What a weird teleport. Uh, it confuses me more than it does the opponent. Oh, jeez, Lo Chi. All right, at least this background is not constantly spinning. I don't, I don't mind how it scrolls. I think that's fine. That's a decent way to do it. I'd rather all the stages be like that, honestly. Like, you know what this feels like? This feels like, you know, an episode of Law, Law and Order or, or uh, CSI when there's some kid that's like, Mom, shut up! And he's playing a video game. Like, this is what's on the screen. And it plays sound effects from, like, the Atari, though. Like, that that's what, that's what Vicious Circle is. Maybe it was designed to be like that. Like, we'll get paid if we make just a, a game to be played in the background of network dramas. I, I think that's a viable business strategy. So I basically have all of Jago's mainstays. I have a dragon punch, I have a horizontal kicking attack, and I have a projectile. He does have the teleport, so that's something different, but still. Ooh, that's cool. And my pain. He said my pain. Okay. I don't know the uh, fatal overkill tality brutalities. I don't know what they're called in this. Mutilations, I think, maybe? That's two. Here comes three! What is that face? She just wear a coffee can on her head! Like, what is she supposed to be? I guess, like, a just a generic, like, a punk gang warrior? I don't even know. Ooh. Yeah, sorry about Berserker. Sorry for any flashing lights uh, some of you may, might have noticed can't really do much about it when it's so brief and it happens almost every couple of seconds. Oh, what the? What was that? I don't even know what that was. Yeah, yeah. Nah. Still don't really know what to do for Berserker. I believe again, uh, go going by my research, that this game has like a linker system uh, for combos. Like it is very overtly KI. Did I win that? I think I did. I think you think like any real ninja. What? He just appeared. Warrior. 
Warrior? Is that what they're- This looks like a, a Beast Wars action figure. This looks like a mix of Scorponok and like Transmetal uh, Rat Trap. Who is this dude? Get out of here! Uh, this background, just giant cracks in, in the floor and chains and just so much fire. Too much. Okay, that was kind of cool. There is some stuff going. Oh, 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 oh. No. Messed it up. There is some stuff going in terms of juggles, so there is that. You know, I'm actually I'm actually kind of impressed. Like, it, juggling was limited in the original KI. Like, you could do it, but it was like really specific circumstances. But it seems to be like more open in this. I, I really can't tell. I'm not sure if it, that's on purpose <laughs> or it's because the game is unfinished. Ah, oh, damn. Okay. Round three, though, this time. What was... What, why is... There's, there's coaches? There's whistling? What's happening? I can't be bested by Warrior. Never. I mean... I, I shouldn't have any moral high ground here. No self-respecting ninja would be like, what, what do you want your ninja name to be? He's like, I want to be Edge. Like, shut up. You can be Edge if you're a wrestler. That's it. Okay, I think that was like a bonus fight because he didn't come out of. Oh, it's Edge. He didn't come out of his little like hotel room or whatever. What was what that? All right, train level classic. Gotta have that in, in your in your ripoff fighting game. Uh, uh. Yeah. Every time I want to do a move that's not ready to be performed, yeah, I want my my game to go. Uh, uh. And there's something about the CGI look to this game, right? That's like, that's it, it's similar to KI, obviously, but there's something it lo looks way worse here. I mean, it's because the proportions I can't really tell, but I, it looks like I'm playing with action figures, like way more so than KI. Yeah, I at least had it, all the characters were sweaty. At least there was some type of realism, and maybe it's because there was more animation frames and such, and just because Rare, you know, uh, were at their peak back then. Uh, but there's just something about this that's just like, I feel like I'm playing a uh, Saturday morning action figure commercial. You know? Hey kids, it's Edge! He performs his crazy berserk mode. Watch out for his really slow shurikens! Vicious Circle comes with everything shown here. Midway by an Atari, not included. Uh, 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 what? Oh! In your face! Wee, 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 New generation era. Oh my god. Alright, it's Saber Wolf. Oh, go down with the rocket ship! Oh, go again! I do, you know what? I'm making fun. I do like of the dumb story ideas. Like everyone's just gone nuts. It's battle world and everyone's fighting. Therefore, you don't, you barely need any justification for your fighting tournament. You know what I mean? Everyone's doing it. It's a cool thing to do. What the hell is that? As like a, we're in the crashed like uh, airfield, like hangar. And there's, I think you can see planes in the background, but that's where we fight the, the werewolf, right? That's where he makes the most sense. Oh. So I'm gonna need to lab up on, on Vicious Circle. Stiletta. Stiletta. He just jumps down and says their own name. So what is Stiletta? I feel like she could be a muscle mommy, which would be cool, but like a lame muscle mommy. What the hell was that? Why was it bleeding so profusely? I hate that stupid teleport. Why do I do it all the time? I don't even really know what the motion is. Just the just the whammy guitars every three seconds. That's the other thing that's like draining me. It's it's a lot to listen to. It's fine to listen to like one song or something, but when it's never end, when it's relentless, it's a little it's a little much. What's with their jumping? Jesus! Virtual Fighter, much? You studying, you studying VF, girl? What is going on in the background? There's like locusts attacking buildings and stuff. No idea. Again, it's distracting me, the, the background's a little bit. Your characters pop on the screen for sure, but... What? what? 
It's just like time out to stop. Is there some type of like maximum damage mechanic going on? Jesus. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. Oh my god, I didn't mean to. Ah! You can't even. Wow. Did you see that jump? Okay, let's try. I'll switch to my character to uh, Glacius. Uh, let's see how that goes. I don't know. He's he's kind of a bit more awkward. I am not really getting a sense of his special moves yet. Locked. Did I win? I actually won that. Where have the music? Locked. <laughs> I can't handle that. Oh, three seconds. Can I? Can I do it? Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 oh. Craig. C Craig, that's his name. Crave, okay. Taste my blood. You know, taste his blood. I don't, I don't think that's what you wanted to say. And what is with this music? You know, now I miss the whammy guitars. Ah, oh, jeez. Do it. Do it. Or do nothing. Whatever you want, CPU. Damn it. I mean, this guy looks like an action figure, too. Like a like a toy. Wait, he's just, just a recolor of the dude I fought before? The the Beast Wars Transmetals action figure? Really feels like it. Oh, shit! I can't even tell what that dude is! Dreadlock! You trying to you trying to bite the style Dreadlock from Ultra Vortex? Get out of here. What is this dude? Is it a gladiator? It's when you when you're fight you're playing a brand new fighting game and obviously one that you could never have practiced before. What the hell? Huh? What is this? Oh, I guess that doesn't work. No, it does? Oh shit! I got a, caught in some type of loop. I don't know. All right, almost dead. Get out of here, lameoid. Can I do a fatal? I don't know. I don't know how to do them. To be continued. Who is that? What? What are game games says to be continued? Even if they didn't know they were gonna finish it. You don't. You don't have to join the circle. Take it from me. I don't. I don't know what vicious circle really is. Even a, a, a having played it, uh, <laughs> there's just there, there's simultaneously too much to say and not enough to say at all. But uh, you can kind of see why why it was perhaps uh, not released. It's 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 a little rough. So so let us move on to our next game. I I think it's a little bit more solid. A little bit less nineties. Our next contender is a rather unique one, and while I've heard of a number of famously cancelled fighters over the years, Burning Fists, aka Force Striker, aka Real Fighters, aka Hustle Muscle, is one that has completely flown under my radar. This was a Sega CD, or more accurately, a Mega CD title that was developed internally at Sega of Japan. It utilized the compact disc format by providing a high quality soundtrack, animated snippets, and that's pretty much it, as was the standard MO for most, if not all, Mega CD games at the time. However, despite it looking really solid, it was cancelled when it was roughly 80% finished, and while I couldn't find a direct cause for this decision, I have to assume it was because the Mega CD wasn't really producing big money spinners, and Sega just decided to cut their losses. Some of the unfinished content included a full final boss, endings for each character, as well as another round of testing and polish. Fortunately, Good Deal Games got their hands on that 80% finished build and worked with JT Games to fix a few issues with the AI and menu selection and re-released it, albeit unlicensed, in 2006. Sadly, they weren't able to add in any new content, so that final boss would forever go unchallenged. It's pretty cruel that Sega's CD add-on was denied a solid and exclusive fighting game, as uh, Supreme Warrior wasn't really cutting it. So uh, let's fire up my totally legit Mega CD unit and start punching. 
There's something very childlike and innocent about the Sega CD logo. <laughs> It's just I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know how, how bad of an idea it was, I guess, and how it would set a precedent for even worse ideas in the future. So there's this Burning Fist, or like we, we already discussed, a.k.a. Force Striker. Uh, so this is the repurposed original ROM that was kind of cleaned up slightly by J2 Games and, and the other company. <laughs> So it is a very intriguing release to me. I, I think out of all of them, like this is really cool that this was kind of unofficially, unofficially, unofficial released uh, back to the public. So we got Loke, Loki, Masamune, Empuza, that's an interesting name, M Mikland, Vincent, G. Gotchev, Shi San Mei, and uh, Sukikage. I, I'll fancy a ninja. Why would I not ninja it up? He's, he's kind of got a weird color scheme there. Very Christmassy, some of these colors. Oh, so we can select our opponent? How about Loki? That's fine. So there's actually some attributes. Wow, look at all those bars. If you love bars and graphs, Burning Fist Force Striker is for you. What? <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, stage chooser. It's an interesting way to put it. Uh, pizza pasta? Let's do it. Okay, we're in front of the Coliseum. That's not what I expected, actually. Oh, wow, okay. You're hyping us up with the flashing. You can stop, please. Thanks. And then, geez, all right. This is like a CD game, so... Loading. Yo, this music bow. Oh, whoa. okay, we're going already. There was no round one fight even. Jeez. Wow, look at all this. Look at all the line scrolling though. It's actually pretty technically impressive. What's not impressive is the fact that there's like no hitbox sometimes. I was just sailing right through this guy. Oh, we could just walk through each other too. So yeah, like this is just cleaned up in terms of uh, fixing menus so that they were like selectable and maybe some AI things like it was a very minimal uh, amount of work uh, done not to say I don't appreciate it but yeah it, it seems like there's a bit more work to do <laughs> it's not the coolest ninja I've seen it's quite the opposite actually kind of a little dorky I do like how they gussied up the Colosseum. Look at all this shit. They got lights attached to statues. Whoa, what the? <laughs> that was insane. He is Loki. Ooh, there's my throw. This does have that Sega CD look. As impressive as all the the background sort of stage transitions and, and line scrolling it is. Hello? Yeah. Fighters Magazine. 295 in Canada, 195 in the UK. Jeez. A marvelous ninja magic. <laughs> it, so we're reading about this in the fight magazine. That's a, that's awesome. What the <laughs> Okay. Did we become like buddies? What happened there? I haven't really found anything what I would consider a special move yet for, for Sukakage. Which is... It's just like, when I think about like, oh, there's a weird unreleased Sega CD fighting game that... that I was like, what, 91, 92? The date on this? Maybe 93 at the most? And it's like, what, what were the special move inputs yet? I don't know, I'm not sure if the team kind of knew yet. Because all the traditional stuff doesn't seem to be working for me. Oh, wait! That... It's like down back and attack it was something though every fan's number one choice the, the graphics seem a little corrupted there i can't really tell it's it's marvelous ninja magic that's all we really know it's like you open up a magazine it's just like he won due to marvelous ninja magic deal with it <laughs> okay so so how do we use the sega cd lads i don't know just make a quick clip of, like, absolute nonsense happening. It's like another Japanese stage, maybe, and we're against this 
uh, lady rustler? I'm cool with that. I'm not sure about the half pant leg though. Get better gear. I have my sort of dragon kick, but the motion does seem a little inconsistent. Holy crap, she's got some moves. Give her that. Oh, wow. That's fast. Oh, oh nice suplex. And the nip up too? Impressive, impressive. My dude's like really tired by the end of a match. I, I guess they have uh, idle stances that change depending on how much damage they've taken, which is a nice little detail that they didn't need to do. Yeah, sorry I'm just mashing. I am trying to find other moves here, but I'm just kind of getting that only. God, you take damage so fast in this. Okay, I really wish this wasn't gibberish for the text and was just like some sublime English. That would be mwah. So it's a car your opponent is in motion. What we had like uh, on a on a boat, and then what the? Oh, it's not like a weird creature. It's like a a human warrior. Okay. See, so yeah, your opponent's always traveling, and you're just hitching a ride. This is a pretty cool stage too. Lots of screaming, angry uh, blonde men though. They really want us to fight. What? What the? That move! That has to be banned! That it must be banned! <laughs> that crazy horizontal move he's doing. And like, are we really, we're just allowing weapons now too? What kind of tournament is this? Oh my god, you see that? I have like a teleport dash. How'd I do it? Alright, I have one more round to figure it out. So I do like that the third final round has like, speedier music. There's, uh put some drama into the fight. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> sure. Yeah, why not? Uh, makes just as much sense as all the others. All right, Chili. That's that face, uh, that statue in the background really reminds me of the one that's in Mount Olympus stage in Tournament Fighters. I think it's because that stage was like taking different monuments and, and wonders of the world from all across the globe. So that's just a common thing. Like this, this uh, statue is a, something that appears in Chile, maybe? He's flashing some shit. He's got lasers in his eyes. Should we be concerned about this? It does really seem to be a proper fighting tournament. Like it's being publicized. There's lights and cameras everywhere. I like that's very, very... Uh, forward thinking in the early 90s to have that type of presentation. Usually it's like a very, you know, secretive tournament or something. So I kind of like that glitzy aspect to it. Oh, there it goes. 100% Sega uh, tasted. <laughs> I guess the graphics were getting a little corrupt. Now this one's all messed up. Okay. It's, it's not a 100% completed game. Yeah. That sucks. I guess the like the losers just have to bring him to his next match. That's how he gets to the other parts of the world. Oh, if I just unlocked this game. Oh, it's rough, rough stage. Oh my God, you started off with a suplex. What are you? A boxer or a wrestler? Marvelous, a blue marvelous Mark Marrow here. What, what the? Oh, okay. we. They have a bit of a bug here. This is as designed. I'm a little concerned because there's no time. Oh, there you go. Okay, we fixed them, folks. You had a bit of a short circuit there. Is he broken? No, he's okay. He's, he's just taking his time. He's feeling me out. Watching me do all my awkward ninja moves. Oh. There's guys just shooting. Let me be careful, huh, boys? Let's be careful with the with the gunfire in the air. Huh? It's a little uh, the stage already, already makes me nervous enough. Man, it's, it's it's the same thing as like Street Fighter One, where specials are like absolutely devastating. Like it's a quarter of your life easily. But why do I gotta be on a roof? Why is it gonna be like that? That's not fair. All right, Kenya. If I kind of forget what were the other characters. Oh. Alright, big army guy. 
Come on, this, this is Vincent. He's an army guy that I think I think the stages are randomly being assigned because this guy would fit in that last stage that we were in. The one with all the army shit. And then the warrior that we fought might have been with the spear might have been better here. Very small stage. Worried about my chances here. Oh. All right, that's you didn't give me much of a match there, Vincent. I'll be do a bit better in this round. We're, ju we're just flying through each other. And we're just molecularly phasing. Okay. But yeah, AI definitely seems to be really wonky, like all over the place. Yeah, see? That would have fit. Oh my god, you didn't need to shoot! Damn. So USA, I would like to think that that dude that we fought earlier... Wait, what? What's this? Oh my god, it's the Sega CD. Oh my god, it's Rao! <laughs> Hell is, dude! Zero wing! Lightning speedo! He's getting like an intro? What the? Oh no, wait, because I remember what we ah oh, the game isn't finished. So so we're not going to the USA, we're back. Come together Right again, if you want to challenge me, I'll be there. Unfortunately you won't. As discussed, this game has like has a final boss introduction. But there's no actual fight with them. Oh, everyone gets a little scene. That's nice. Where are they now? Oh, she was a wrestler. I knew it. This is a pretty, this is a pretty decent cast. Like there's, there's a, there's a couple of fighters in here that are pretty unique. She was like a circus performer. That's cute. Oh, Wolfie. So yeah, th that was that stage. No, maybe that was th those were the proper stages. I don't know. Still mysterious. So Burning Fist Force Striker. It said Burning Fist in other parts of the game. I know it's a confusing title. This I feel like it needs a little bit more polish, and this could have been like this could have been the Sega CD's savior. <laughs> Not really. Next up, we have one of the more fascinating stories from deep within the labyrinth-like bowels of the fighting game genre. The Force 5 Jinji Storm Conundrum! Enter Anchor Inc, who specialize in button bashing and button bashing adjacent stuff like Toy Fighter, Jojo, Phantom Blood on the PS2, porting fighting vipers to the Dreamcast, and what they are probably best known for, the Fighter's Destiny series. As the story goes, they're in the middle of developing Force 5 for the Atomus Wave arcade board in or around 2003, but early location tests in Japanese arcades resulted in mostly negative feedback. Sammy slash Anchor then sat on the game until its development just eventually stalled out. Anchor then ceased their electronic entertainment pursuits altogether after the release of Phantom Blood in 2006 and pivoted away from important stuff like fighting games and onto useless, boring stuff like uh, developing renewable energy sources or something. I don't know. Force 5 got far enough along that it's now completely playable with a full roster of 10 characters and one of three bosses that you can choose to face at the end of your arcade run. Unfortunately, the game doesn't feel 100% complete as it doesn't have any sort of story or endings and lacks a certain sauce in its general gameplay. It's unclear if Anchor were toying around with putting in additional mechanics or moves, but it certainly feels like something's missing. Okay, but how does Gingy Storm fit in? Well, another completely separate, boner medication sounding company named Atrativa reportedly bought the graphical assets and code, but not the IP or characters from Anchor slash Sammy, and had a very small team make changes both big and small and release it in Japanese arcades for the Naomi arcade board instead. Never heard of Atrativa? Don't worry, nobody has, as they don't have any video game credits before or after this release, coincidentally enough. 
The changes they made to Force 5 included the title and character names, added in some very not needed new features, and redesigned every single character, which are all stupendously, impressively way worse than the original designs. While the moves and animations for each fighter are the exact same, their previous Force 5 drip has all been stripped out, and replaced by generic grey outfits and some really bizarre aesthetic choices. Also, for some reason, they locked away the three female characters behind a sub-boss system, where, in a similar fashion to Force 5, you get the choice to challenge only one of them at the end of the game. Once you defeat that particular lady, they are then added to the main cast, but they also look worse than their original incarnations. Now, since the starting lineup is all dudes, uh, each one comes equipped with their own associated waifu JPEG that serves no real purpose. As you go through the ladder, you uh, win their waifu as a prize and are greeted with increasingly more lewd and inconsistently drawn pictures of them. Apparently, Atrativa couldn't decide on a single art style, so they commissioned several artists to draw these characters, which comes off as really low effort and kind of amateurish. All this really does is make Jinji Storm feel like a less classy and less serious game, giving it a big simple 2000s vibe. Apparently, the sexy time angle didn't play too well in arcades, so they did release a version without the spicy content, but didn't really improve matters all that much. And because I don't want to flirt with demonetization, I'm going to be playing the Force 5 version today, but also because I prefer it, as the character designs are just a thousand times better in every way. I really do feel for Anchor Inc here. They weren't able to go out on one last great fighting game, but thankfully, people can at least experience what could have been in the crazy far-flung future world that is 2023. Yeah, Thomas Wave logo sure is classy. I don't know what it is about it. Force 5, calm down. That's a pretty good logo in and of itself, Force 5. Good stuff, Sammy and Anchor. So this is an arcade game, no real modes. We've got Shin, Shura, Mei Ling, Del Sol, Kai, that's my girl, Hound, that's his sick name actually, Beck, Ralph, Tony, good old Tony, and then Sokka. Some pretty strong art, I have to say, but uh, we're gonna stick with Kai. Uh, pretty cool character. The thing with this game is that the artwork is sick. The character models are like a little more basic than that. I, I kind of wish they'd have cell shading or something uh, to sort of, uh, sort of fold into the artwork a little bit better so they match. So it is a three button game. So it plays a bit more like Virtual Fighter. Backgrounds, as you can see, <laughs> with, with the Endless Horizon work more like Tekken. Or, my favorite example, Final Fight Streetwise. <laughs> so the thing with special moves is that it's not... Ooh, nice throw, actually. Is that... <sighs> it, it's this weird mix of, like, Street Fighter-esque or, you know, 2D-esque uh, energy blasts. And, and a little bit of Tekken mixed in there, but it's a lot of more real-world martial arts. You can do some motions and some characters do some crazy shit, but more often than not, I, I don't even know what the commands are. And there's no command list for this game at all, again, because it's a, this is an arcade build of it. Oh, okay. I do like these backgrounds. I, I guess they're constructed like this is what, 2002, 2003, as, as I stated in the intro? Ooh, so that's what I'm talking about from before. And I think they kind of are nailing the, the Tekken Endless Horizon scrolling floors with the static background. It doesn't, it doesn't look nearly as, as, as magic puzzle eye 3D as like Tekken 2 or even 3 look, looked. So I'm just trying to suss out some special moves so you can get anything uh, super flashy going. Music's also pretty decent, I find. It's also pretty Tekken-esque. So none of the characters, uh, as far as I know, have any quotes or like any real voices, like uh, you know, winning quotes or something. It's weird that we're fighting him in like a mall or, or like a train station. Oh, see, some projectiles. We're getting a little crazy. I can maybe eke this out. I have been known to do it once or twice. Well, there you go. So this is the thing that I that I mentioned during our intro segment for Force Five is that this is the game. 
Uh, this this is all that it's really got going for it. It's got decent characters, uh, solid fighting fundamentals, and that's kind of it. I do wish there was some type of other mechanic, either defensive or offensive, but it's kept pretty simple. I mean, I guess the main thing is how sick that artwork is. I, I don't know what she's going for with with her costume there. I'm not exactly sure. This background may be slightly, slightly less polished in in the magic eye department. It's kind of going nuts. You know, not, not even Tekken or Virtual Fighter. I guess more than anything, it it's sort of it's a bit faster than Virtual Fighter. So it's like if anything, it plays a little bit like Dead or Alive. But even Dead or Alive has, you know, plenty of things to set it apart. Ooh, was that a, a ground throw? What was that? I have to keep trying to test that out. Fortunately, there's no training mode, so we can't really uh, practice it in any sort of real capacity. It'd be really cool if, if someone could mod this game. Just just take what code they can extrapolate uh, from this build and and put some modes like build together with a menu or something. I don't. I really don't know how much work that is. It's probably a, a shit ton, but huh? So we're able to tech that throw, so that's something. No, oh, no. Uh. That was a pretty cool uh, elbow attack. Damn. Okay, Sokka. Ain't no pushover. Yeah, we're gonna continue. Saka can't keep mm, so mad. Oh, that's you're locked into your character, huh? You you cannot switch out. That's fine. I like Kai, so. Oh, <laughs> what's the best uh, counter to a flying knee? Well, it's a flying knee, of course. So yeah, no reversals like Dead or Alive, no interactivity with the background or anything, so... Yeah, I, you know, I really think, like, any other type of mechanic uh, to set this apart. Like, it's called Force 5. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I wasn't really able to find that in, in my research. So there's some type of guard break there. Maybe there are mechanics, just I, I'm not... They're not outworldly telling you. Outworldly. I got Mortal Kombat on the brain. Yes, there is some type of, like, guard break. I'm not exactly sure. There's, like, no other meters. That's, that's what makes me feel like, yeah, the game is slightly unfinished. You know, it just feels like there's maybe some uh, subtle mechanics down there. But we have no, no metrics in which to discover them. I think this guy is like kickboxing, so very, um, maybe just regular boxing actually, looking at those shoes. So, uh, very Steve Fox. This is a, a post Steve Fox world, so. Everyone, everyone getting that pump in the background though. All the red shirts. Everyone's training real hard. I'm not sure if Tony has the charisma or, or interesting boxing techniques to, to get himself into Epo. But he could. Maybe he's got something. Maybe he has a move that, like, just makes your brain stop. It's possible. Look at all these guys working out. It's getting me tired. I haven't been to the gym in a while. So this is Shin. Probably the most stock fighting game protagonist name I can think of. Or anime in general. This guy really reminds me of, like, someone like from Fighter's Destiny or something. Or, like, King of Fighters Maximum Impact. Oh, oh, shit. That was a pretty good flurry there. Oh, there's a cute- I'm getting distracted by those cute elephants! Close fight. Oh! Damn. I can't seem to link that to whatever it is. It might be only work on a crouching opponent, which is why, uh, you know, I'm gonna mistime it every time. Maybe it's not like a ground-based throw. No. Oh, what the hell was that? Yo, there's some- there's some stuff. I have no idea what that was, though. Okay, well, I guess we won't find out, because I think I'm winning this this match. There you go. Shin kick, the ultimate of kicks. Bam! What? The power of the Force 5! Oh, that was a very... Akira Yuki. Oh my god, he just beat me. I didn't even realize. Well, I don't really got a choice here. 
We're going all the way with Kai. I'm going all in. I mean, it feels pretty satisfying to like, you know, just, just the actual moment-to-moment -moment combat, the the feel of the hits, the impact and stuff. It all feels correct. Maybe it's it's weird. Maybe it's like, what was that? What did I just do? I threw like a little ground wave. Like, like you know how some games do get saved? Like, we'll be talking about a game uh, later on in this video. How someone was able to finally re-release... What was that shoulder barge? Um, and, you know, other games kind of getting resurrected and get getting new releases somehow. This absolutely could, I feel. Like, it's solid enough. Would the, would the FGC, like, sort of really gravitate towards this? I don't know. That game looks pretty dated, but at least, like, I don't know, Guile Winquote or Epsilon Eagle or Griffey Bones could resurrect this game. Just on their Twitters alone. <laughs> this is a weird background. I'm just, I'm just seeing. I think it's left over from Toy Fighter. Oh, yo! What was that? Like a, like a rear choking suplex? Raven's pretty cool. Like, there's a toy scientist back there? I don't know what's going on. Like, the, there's a definite storyline going on. Uh, at least with this stage, or maybe certain characters' backstories. We certainly don't know what it is, because when a game never gets released and there's no demo, there's no, like, story sequences at all in this, unfortunately. Um, so, so the story remains mysterious. Oh, what? We got shadows! Okay. You can't handle the stomps. No one can. They're they're dangerous. They'll get you. I'll try them again. No? Okay. She, she's catching on. Ugh. So I've still done, like, crazy moves. I just don't know how to do them. Like that, that crazy shoulder barge and, like, this... A uh, triangle elbow strike that shot like a volcano and like a ground wave. There's stuff. So this is the choice of three bosses. Uh, one's uh, light, medium, and hard. Uh, I'm going to go with Phantom the Medium guy. I've seen some videos on number nine. I don't think anyone can beat that boss, actually. His power is cannot estimate, so... Uh, Phantom looks sick, actually. It looks like a, a like a later JoJo stand. Or a Terminator. I'm not sure if I can beat him, particularly. We'll, we'll give it a go. That was a pretty sick movie did already. Ow. Uh, okay. At least, at least all normal things can be- Oh my god! You know, I hate bosses. What, what the hell was that? I was gonna say, at least he's one of those bosses where, like, normal things apply to them. Like, bosses, oh, you can't throw them? Shut up. Sh shut up. Oh my... Damn. Okay, there there it is again. Don't know how I did it, but it did good damn... Wow, that was... That was, that was really fast. Okay, weirdo. Where'd the music go? Yeah, oh, wow! That was an embarrassing whiff. Uh, sure. I mean, this this game is not finished, so so I'm surprised that's the only sort of bug we've seen. Did you see that? I did that dumb ground throw that doesn't do anything, but I dodged his red lightning. How fortuitous. Oh, oh, can I do it? Nope. No, I can't. No, I can't! That was close, though. This fighting style does not really fit, like, some sort of android cyborg robotic terminator thing. Oh! What? That was a counter? <laughs> this is, as Justin would say, this is getting sweaty! Sweaty matches! Oh! I did it! That crazy kick! Okay, that went well, so this next round will not. It just won't. Uh, uh, oh, oh! Oh! No, I didn't mean to do it that time. It was bad, bad timing. Oh my, what? He just stabbed me! Oh. 
<sighs> so okay, that that was that was a bit debilitating, like depressing, even like uh, soul soul kind of crush there. Wait, what? It just boots you back to the main menu? Are you serious, Force Five? He was medium skill. I think you have all limited tries against the first boss or something like that. But yeah, really strong game. Probably the strongest that, that we're taking a look at today. Not to say that the other couple of games are bad, but Force 5, man, really would like to live in the timeline where you were a thing. Our last game is probably the most well-known, and again comes to us from our good friends down at Atari. No, the uh, 1990s Atari. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thea Realm Fighters was another attempt by the struggling publisher to ride the coattails of other far more successful fighting game franchises. And since we're now talking about it on a cancelled fighting game video, you can imagine how well that worked out for them. Developed by High Voltage Games, of White Men Can't Jump and The Conduit fame, the goal of TRF was to unabashedly rip off Mortal Kombat, even to the point of having a really similar storyline and hiring the exact same martial arts actors. This was made possible because, at that time, those specific actors and Midway upper management were on the outs over a pay dispute, which caused Midway to recast all their roles. This included the original Liu Kang, Katana slash Melina, Shang Tsung, and Johnny Cage, who all hopped over to High Voltage's Illinois-based studio and away from Midway's Illinois-based studio. Now, why make such an overt, potentially lawsuit-generating clone? Well, because Atari couldn't manage to get Mortal Kombat on the Jaguar during the first years of its life, and when they almost did, it was far too late. So, in the meantime, they commissioned stuff like Kasumi Ninja and Ultra Vortec, and Thea Realm Fighters was simply their last attempt to try and make that Mortal Kombat coinage. High Voltage's mission was to outdo Midway's moneymaker in any way they could, and they would do so by offering more. A lot more. They originally planned to include 25 playable characters, with half of that being unlockable, as well as multiple sub-bosses, a final boss, five hidden fighters, and tons of stages. That was the plan, at least. Like so many other late-era JAG games, Thea Realm Fighters was cancelled simply due to poor timing. And when I say poor timing, I mean it was when Atari's coffers were barren and empty. The game was reportedly 90% complete when the higher-ups started ghosting High Voltage whenever they tried calling. Now, there was no earthly way an unashamed MK clone releasing at the very tail end of 1995 on the goddamn Jaguar was going to change Atari's fortunes, but my heart still goes out to all involved for having tons of their work go largely unseen. Thankfully, a much earlier build, several in fact, survived, with both offering a different selection of fighters and both being incredibly unstable. These first made their way around Atari homebrew conventions before being widely released on the internet a few years back. So, uh, give me a second to grab my favorite controller in the world, and let's check out these fighters from the Thea Realm. Ooh, so, uh, we are entering the realm. The Thea, Thea Realm here. <laughs> Menus. This is a very pre, 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 uh, beta. Not even a beta, I'm not even sure. They're alphas, so this is the, the menu that we are presented with. There's two different versions of this game uh, that I'm going to be checking out. Um, what am I... Okay, there you go. Drakkar? Yeah, no shit! <laughs> oh god, okay. So I have Drakkar. That is surreal. Uh, there's almost no sound at all, so I decided to at least put some um, Tattoo Assassins music over this that's isn't your car wasn't he in like a uh, mortal kombat uh new era that i played one of them how can i even attack like he wasn't taking any hits oh he is didn't look like it at first state stage is kind of nice not sure if special moves are here yet maybe they didn't get, get get that far we have 35 seconds I'm nervous about what's going to happen. Sometimes nothing's happening when, when I'm moving. 
<laughs> it's always amazing when you can still play something that was never actually released. Ooh, music's getting more intense. Um, but sometimes you can't expect the world. You really can't. What? Why can't I? Why? He, sometimes he takes damage. Sometimes he doesn't. I don't think I'm. I'm making it before before the end of the time. Yep. There you go. <laughs> so that was kind of a bust. Firena. Yeah, that's something. Firena versus Velocia. <sighs> These character designs, huh? So I find a lot of Mortal Kombat ripoff games did this shit with the with the names overlaid on top of the energy bars. Like I'm pretty sure Way of the Warrior does it. It's another, another it's, there's a taunt. There's ta taunting confirmed. Well, oh, okay, crashing confirmed as well. All right, I reset. We are now Chen Ho and Gobbler Gobbler. I have no idea what his name is. Let me know in the comments who you think the, the name on the upper right is. Some of these might be placeholder characters. This doesn't even look like a digitized actor that I'm playing. There's something about him that looks off. The ninja, sure. Man. It's like there's just as many, you know, Street Fighter 2 ripoffs that like are that's clearly Chun Li. That's clearly Guile, American Army Man. It's like Mortal Kombat's a whole other subgenre of ripoffs. Like, j just dress up a guy in pajamas and put on a, a hood. He's a ninja. Doesn't matter. Oh, that's a great attack. That's super dope. Can I actually win, win a match uh, uh, via damage and not time out? Just do this big dumb throw, I guess. I'm coming. I'm coming. Oh, I bet you. I bet you. Oh, yeah. It just crashes when you win. Okay, that's sick. So this is now I am Onyx. You know, ninja name Onyx, and that's Renegade. Oh, it's the Renegade. Ultimate Warrior ripoffs. Everyone stand up. Count yourselves. You're all valid. I didn't even tell that man is some shiny ass titties. This guy's got. I like it. He's wearing like a skull helmet. Orange tights. This, this would be this guy would fight Glacier in WCW, but just don't call him the Renegade. You already had one. That that attack, that air attack. Look at that. You have to respect it. You've got to respect Thea Realm fighters and this advanced tech it's got going. <laughs> so I'm a, I'm a scared because as soon as I knock this guy on his butt, just gonna yeah. That's going to happen. All right, that's our last character I can pick. Now I will be the Renegade. What does he have? He's got nothing so far. I haven't really found anything that would that would constitute a special move, I think. Oh, wait, some of my buttons actually control Chen Ho? Or is that the AI? Oh, wow, he's taking that, that kick, to the, kick to the balls pretty well. I'm hammering his wang. Nothing's happening. And this music is perfect. This really sets the tone for Thea Realm Fighters. Look at that, that Metroid spin. Why can't Metroid spin? That's why, because it looks dumb. Doesn't look great. Oh, wow. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this was like the proof of concept, Bill. Like, this was just a demo that they threw together. And none of these characters were like the final characters at all. Like they just they just dressed some janitors up that day and just said, "Oh, just jump around, just just do some flippy whippy shit, and we'll record it, I guess." And there we go. I think that's all the characters for this build. I don't want to. I want to play much more. Oh, there was a special move. All right, I'm surreal. I lied. Farina's got shitloads of stuff. She beat my butt. What the hell? Ba like again, a huge bang of like Mortal Kombat New Era Mujin character for Firena there. Uh, last time we fought her, like the game kind of kind of crashed out of nowhere, so I don't know what's gonna happen. It actually looks like some special moves are happening. It's hard to tell. Cause usually you try to listen to sound effects and and such, but oh, okay. All right, great. All right, why don't we check out the other more stable build? If you can believe it. Uh, hopefully it is. Hey! It's 
actual characters. There's uh, Daniel Piscina. Oh, that's an interesting noise. Let's take talk. And spark. Hey, now we're talking, I think. And there's sound. It's bad sound, but I mean, it is a Jaguar. I do like that we're on a Hollywood soundstage. This looks Jaguar as shit. This, this is definitely a, the build that's more advanced I'd like to think. Watch it not. Watch it not be. Characters look weird though. It's like they were painted over, like the digitization. These are weird sound effects. Yeah, hide behind those boxes so we can't see. Let's obscure the fight as much as we can. Uh, 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 okay. Any special moves yet? Let's just kill him. <laughs> All right, whatever, sure. Oh, just one, just one round. So that's uh, Hong Sung, uh, Hong Sung Pak, I believe. Oh, this is the original Liu Kang actor. They all, ooh, special moves. Very Liu Kang. The, the sprites, them drawing over them or painting them over a little bit, uh, it reminds me a lot of uh, Shaq Fu, how those sprites were designed a little bit. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is incredibly fast move. Maybe too fast? Whoa! Damn. It seems like they all have like a, a power. The other guy had like green energy around him, so I guess that's what the the Thea Realm fighters have. W what is happening? Did I do that? Do I just send a rain of swords down? Yeah, maybe. Okay, sparky plug. Let's let's take butt plug over here. <laughs> Pick another stage. Uh, psh, down the Hollywood. We've done that. We've done that. Oh, that looks nice. What the hell? Look at this Robo dude. This Gobot. Because Royal Marshal was one of the names of the guys in the previous build, but he looked nothing like that. So, so Spark, uh, Daniel Piscina is now Raiden as well. Spark here reminds me of AC Current from uh, Tattoo Assassins, who looks almost exactly like this guy. And just with the, the zebra pants, really? I, I think this is better than the previous. I think it is. Let's take Royal Marshall. What do you got? <laughs> nothing. I got nothing, I think. I can't figure anything out. So, oh, what, what was that? Excuse me, sir? Was that a gun? What? No? I had some type of... Oh! So I got some type of dumbass punching special. That's it. Just take it. Just take it. No push block. We don't need that. Okay. Is there any other character's talk? Maybe I didn't explore him enough. What the? What is that? No. It looks so bad. What am I, Green Lantern? I guess. Now I'm intrigued with the story and the power set of the Thea Realm fighters. Like, I feel bad. Oh, it crashed again. So, uh, yeah, I think that's about it today. Oh. And there you go, four cancelled fighting games with their own uh, unique look and feel. If I'm being honest, out of the bunch, I think Force 5 had the most potential. If it had endings and its own distinct gameplay hook or mechanic, I could totally see it getting a console port onto the PS2 in the early to mid 2000s, and maybe we'd still be hearing about it today over on Guile Winquo. You know, come to think of it, there's actually quite a few other fighting games that never fully saw the light of day. And if you'd like me to punch and or kick through them, do let me know in the comments below, or you can always hit me up on my Twitter. Until then, I'll see y'all next time in the Flophouse.